Welcome to a peek at a collection. Um, it, this collection is potpourri, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And uh, when I talk to people about art, I like to ask them what they feel and what they think about uh, what they're looking at and seeing, or what they're seeing at and looking. This exhibit is about the line. The line. <laughs> Um, and since we're, st since we're standing right here, we'll start with uh, the kangaroo. Well, this is what fascinates me about work um, that's on paper or on canvas. It's flat. It's only a piece of paper. How do we get movement and a feeling of space? Is it magic? What happens to us, inside us, when we look? Again, what do you see when you look at this piece? How does this idea of a frame within a frame within a frame work? Multiple framing just activates the surface more. Oh, no one said that. I don't know if any of you know the work of Sophia Garrett, but um, positive and negative is going on here. We have a lot of white space in there. I don't think she was being stingy with her materials. I think she, what do you think? I think it helps you focus. The white space has, has a life of its own. We're going to move over to the, to the uh, Lyndon piece. Uh, she's an artist who never met a form of making art that she didn't like. She produced her own handmade paper. Oh, wonderful. And then um, she had an image. This is the process that we're talking about now. She used this. She already had a print of this head. And um, she loves windows. And I think I need you all to talk about this piece now. When you look and see, what do you, what do you see? What do I think? Yeah, Jim. Well, it's a, it's a mystery, <laughs> and it's intending to be, create a mystery. You don't know whether the, the face is on the inside or the outside. She was working on paper, painting and printing, and she couldn't get the little, oh, the wind is blowing. <laughs> and it just wasn't right, and then she started working on silk, and she was the happiest artist I've seen. <laughs> And I think, I think it works. This is the work of um, an artist named Berta Galani. This show is hung with no labels. The idea was to get people to respond in a, in a spontaneous way, not looking to see who the artist was or what the title was. But I'll give you some clues. I'll read you the titles. This piece is Genesis Day 3, and this is Genesis Day 5. And what's interesting to see is that her friend did Day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Same subject, look and see, see and look. When I was born, my mother's best friend, I was born with a shock of black hair. And my mother's best friend walked in with these two pieces, and they hung over my crib. And um, it's, they're sweet, they're sentimental. Uh, we could do an hour or two on, is it hard, is it kitsch? I don't really give a damn. <laughs> they're, it, they're lovable mm -hmm. and very special to me. It's the eighth print of a 15-hour poem. And it's called, very unimaginably, Rooster and Hen. <laughs> it's signed B. Winslow. But what I love about this and what this picture taught me was what you can do with a stroke, a magic line. You all know Harold, Harold and the Purple Crayon. Crayon. <laughs> and I have looked at this a thousand times and thought, which way did she do it? Did she do it 
this way, and cross over under. It really doesn't make any difference, but it wakes your brain up. But can I give you a minute to look at these abstract, semi-abstract, realistic, imaginative, color, line, composition. Everything that we have seen tonight leads up to these two pieces. It's, uh, Stephen Cope. He was a student at BU Fine Arts when I acquired these two pieces, and he's in New York now. All right, should we talk about line? The line with Chicken and Hen, and the line in Stephen's work. What's the line doing in this piece? He said uh, some of the work in the other room was undulating, had a line that undulated. Well, that's it for the major part of the exhibit. The last part of the exhibit is a very, it's a collection of very small work that's very precious and personal to me, and it's in the case. Um, this is not part of my exhibit, <laughs> <laughs> but this is very personal. Here are my precious peers by my good friend, the very cheerful artist, Amy Kaufman. And uh, believe me, it was hard deciding between the red peers and the yellow peers and the green peers, but this one had a little conversation with me and again said, take me home. And we were talking about that and somebody said, the pier is very feminine, people can relate to it. Amanda Barrow won a, I think it was a Guggenheim, scholarship and she went to India for a year where she went into the villages and she taught the women how to make handmade paper. We talked about handmade paper in the other room. Um, and then each page in the book has a different configuration of space so that it becomes a very physical, intimate uh, experience between you and this. Every piece is different. If you have no questions, I'd like to tell you this little piece here is by a uh, LA artist who I think was uh, more famous earlier, Blitzstein. And uh, he sells these, he sells artwork ranging from $2.50 to, I think the big ones are like 20000 Yes, they are, <laughs> really. So he had this little piece, and that's his little happy character that appears in a lot of his work. And when you look at it, I think you'll see why there's some humor in it. And I said to him, I, I really like that, but, um, oh, you got it off of a copying machine. He, do, he does that, he'll take his original work and he'll just copy it. I said, it's just not personal love. So he took out a black pen, <laughs> And he went around the picture, he says, is that personal enough for you? That's too funny. Another person who worked with a uh, copying machine was Linda Bond. And um, so what she's done is she's used different images that she produced on the computer and then put it all together, assembled it, and it's original. She only did one this way. They're all variations. This was uh, bought at a little shop um, on Martha's Vineyard. It's, from, it's a series. And I don't know if you know Phyllis Ewan, E-W-E-N. She was dissatisfied with one or two of her works, and so she cut them up. And I've got about 10 of pieces. And you move them around, they, they were abstract paintings. And it's so much fun because you create, oh, you feel so creative. Mm -hmm. You move the pieces around and they talk to each other and they live happily ever after. So uh, maybe that's the goodbye piece for this exhibition. Thank you for coming. Thank you.